safety meeting together. <coughs> Public safety, may I have a resolution for the um, minutes for the last meeting? Get a motion. Yeah, motion. <coughs> Supervisor Brock, seconded by Supervisor Sieber. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. <coughs> Agenda items. You got the floor. Good morning. <coughs> uh, under the action agenda, item A is to request resolution for a new contract with Stock Farm Construction to replace the roof on the Radio Shack, which is on Prospect Mountain. If you recall, we'd gotten a contract with Adirondack Roofing last year. Adirondack Roofing was unable to get the project done, and once the highway became snow covered up there, they were unable to do the work. So we're looking to award it to the second lowest bidder, which is Stock Farm Construction. A motion by uh, Supervisor Brock, seconded by Supervisor Gerard. This is $7,345.30, that's the bid? Yes, and that could change slightly if they find there's water damage to the uh, plywood under the shingles. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Item B is a request for resolution to create a new position of patrol officer. I guess uh, Supervisor Sieber, motion to get it on the floor. Supervisor Gerard, second. Need to tell us about it? Okay. Currently, we have a, uh, a patrol officer that does um, trauma work. Uh, he does training. He does intervention with uh, police officers, primary, primarily police officers. Um, he's one of, I think, two people around the state that currently does this. In addition to working his 40 plus hours a week at the sheriff's office, he is spending a similar amount of time um, tending to the officers, whether they're with our agency or another agency and maintaining their well-being, their mental well-being. Um, as you can imagine, in this day and age, uh, considering everything that's going on in our society, there's a lot of pressures on law enforcement as well as uh, fire and EMS uh, providers. He uh, <coughs> often gets involved. Officers feel very comfortable reaching out to him. Uh, he's not a member of the administration. Sometimes officers are leery to speak with somebody in the command staff. Uh, they're afraid of being labeled, stereotyped. And the biggest thing with police officers is they are typically very proud of what they do. And nobody wants to admit they have problems in their own house or in their own life. That they may be struggling financially, maritally, whatever their situation may be. Um, so this officer um, was recently put into this position on a full-time basis by uh, Sheriff York. We are looking to replace that officer with a full-time patrol officer so that the number of staff out on the road responding to calls remains the same. <coughs> Sheriff Walker. also Walt? add that the, um, um, this officer, who um, is very well respected across the state, he's been teaching across the state, he's actually been asked to go to Florida to help the, the the whole Florida law enforcement community to start up a program, that, uh, a similar type of program. Uh, he was recently called um, by an Arkansas state trooper's wife who, who knows about his, his abilities, and he helped that family through some, some very tough times. So he's very well versed in it. Uh, it's, it I felt that it would be foolish of us not to take advantage of his expertise. He's been working uh, his <coughs> 48, 40, 48 hours a week, plus another 50 to 60 hours on his own time helping uh, with other officers. And I know he's been to some local police departments and helped them out as well with some of the issues that they, they've been having. I just spoke with him this morning, and he told me that he is uh, actually heading up north to meet with the state police up there to start a program up in Clinton County. and. Um, he feels over time, now that he has time to do this, that he's going to be able to get this, this position funded by the state within, within the near future. 
Gerard? What, what happens with uh, those three different places that you just talked about? Who's funding them? Do we have to pay for those? In other words, if, his, if he's specifically de uh, designated towards uh, this issue and other places are calling him for the needs of his expertise, do our, our, in other words, is he on our payroll traveling to other states, et cetera? And he, he are has we been. flipping the bill for he, it? He has been. But when he goes to other places, like he's been to other states, there's no cost on these other agencies. He's doing like that, that on his own volition. Yeah, he's been doing that on his own. Okay. Yep. And uh, as far as um, a budgeted item, bud, where, where does this fall? Is this an extra or is it part of the budget? This would be an additional position in our uh, salaries. So it's something that you're gonna, we're going to have to go to finance with? Correct. If you recall, since 2009, uh, the law enforcement division lost six patrol officers <coughs> during the recession. We lost a patrol sergeant, and we lost a uh, patrol lieutenant. Okay. S Supervisor Kramer? I just want to be clear. Are we creating a position for this specialized individual? Are we creating... I, mean, I don't see why we need to create a new position of patrol officer if you're asking to just replace a patrol officer um, out on the road because you brought this guy out out of the field into the yeah, into I, a different work. We, we still we may, we may may still have those positions, do we, Sean? That we, just we do not. I, I did call over to human resources and I also spoke with Joanne McKinstry. Um, oftentimes in the past they would unfund a position but it would still exist within your table of organization. Those positions were actually deleted. And they said, what I would have to do is ask to create a new position in order to restore it. I guess my thought then is, why wouldn't we create a new position for this guy if he has a specialized job, rather than create a new patrol officer role? He's still a patrol officer. Yeah, he's still in his... It's, you're taking a patrol officer, he's assigned these duties. But in addition to these duties, he's also going to come in work overtime at the special events, the Great Escape, wherever, wherever you might be needed. So he's still a patrol officer. We don't want to do anything to cause any issues with his retirement because he is a police officer. And we want to backfill it with a patrol officer. It would have been easier, quite honestly, just to restore the funding so to one of the deleted positions. Well, I guess you're just saying, no, that's not my question is also, is this person available to help the city police officers and Bolton officers? That's actually, that's actually a great question. He has gone down. He has provided assistance to the Vons Falls Police Department. About, about two, two, three weeks ago, uh, there was an issue down there and he needed help from the officers. He goes wherever, whenever he's needed. And I, I can speak from our own department. He's probably kept one or two officers from making grave decisions. As it sounds like like you said, we shouldn't lose them. Supervisor Sieber. Thank you, um, Chairman Montesi. Uh, Sheriff uh, and Under Sheriff Lamar, what I would really appreciate is the fact that we're back discussing this. And, and what we've been trying to do with personnel is to look at not keeping positions open indefinitely. I know many times in the past we've had positions that have taken a while to be filled or ones that were kind of on the back burner and we um, would just keep it there and vacant and be able to restore that funding. So like you said, it would have been easier just to have said, we have this position in our budget. But our goal is to not continue that practice. It's really to look at every single position and warrant their justification and want it to be able to come back and have those discussions at committee. So the process that you're finding yourself in is very much on purpose. And um, I know that has been a goal of our budget officer to make sure that we're looking and of our chairman at all of our positions. Um, so that, that's why you find yourself back in this position. And I, for one, support this move. I think it's important to our community. And I like the um, type of shared services that we're able to offer in Warren County by creating such a position. Well, not this position. What this this position we're be being asked to put, create is right. a regular patrol officer. But he couldn't do that if this position wasn't created. I understand that. He, he was doing it, but he was working, you know, right. it's not fair. Right. And right. I don't know if it makes a difference or not. The only reason we're asking for the position now instead of waiting till next year's budget is because we are going into our busy season. Supervisor Gerard? Uh, <coughs> And along those lines, w when you're putting together your budget, was this thought process in place to possibly get them in this year's budget 
Um, just for looking at it from our aspects of we've completed our fourth month, 30% of the fiscal year, and you're asking for a new position where it's a lot easier when we sit down with budgets where you ask and justify and then we budget for it. Um, I think previous year something that came up was uh, it was medical related and how we handled the, the doctor staffing, et cetera, some nursing issues that was in a, maybe it was in March of a couple years ago. But those make it difficult in a you know, budgetary process when you're asking for a new position after we just completed the budget process. Yeah, I, so I, my, I guess my question is, had you had thoughts about it? Had you discussed it with the committee groups and the no. budget groups? And No, I can honestly say we didn't. I guess I personally didn't realize what kind of, um, I knew what he was doing, but I didn't, I didn't realize the number of hours that he was putting in on his own time, uh, traveling to other agencies and helping. And, and, and we had a, a, a few issues with a couple of our own people where he was working around the clock. So we didn't really realize it until just recently. So we didn't we didn't look yeah. at it budget season at all last year. <coughs> all right. What's the uh, position of the board? We, the, it's been moved and seconded. Are we I'd like to vote to move it on to finance or personnel or whoever is going to review it next. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> okay. Uh, item C is request resolution to fund the purchase of new portable radios for the law enforcement division. Uh, the radios that the law enforcement division are currently using uh, date back to 2004. Uh, they're beyond end of life. Um, the technology has changed greatly in the radios. Uh, when we hired a vendor to come in here three, four years ago to study our radio system, Televate, one of the recommendations they made back then was to change out our radios and get current technology. Uh, we had been field testing two brands of radios. We've been field testing the Motorola brand and field testing the Harris brand. Um, they really are quite similar in the capabilities of what they do. However, the pricing is not similar. We got true apples to apples pricing. The bit, the pricing that came back on the Motorola portables is $401,000. The pricing that we got back from Harris was 274 and change, 274, 813, 833. Um, so at this time, we were asking to uh, for funding so we can get this purchase done. Uh, this purchase, it actually says it's replacing 100 portable radios, but as I was driving over here this morning, I remember we were also given 12 radios from the Office of Emergency Services, so it's actually repla 93 portables are replacing 112 portables. We did look at trading them in. They really don't want to give you any money for them. They might give you $45 a radio. We thought there was more value in donating them to local fire, EMS, what other agencies out there might need them, towns. Um, we thought there was more value in that rather than turning them in, because quite honestly, all they're going to do is that still destroy them. They don't want them on the market. And I, as I understand this, Ron, this is the result of your asking us for the one and you were talking about the one and done. This is why we brought this to the floor today, correct? Right. Just to elaborate on that before we address the uh, motion here is that um, <clears throat> with the uh, surplus that we've developed, um, the chairman of the board has, has said that there, there, there ought to be some projects that we look at in its entirety, the, the county, that can be one and done. And this happens to be one, along with the fact that the uh, the um, sheriff and, and the undersheriff have developed a, a grant for about 400000 for some of the towers and some of the uh, things that we're going to need. But this is, uh, this is a separate issue. Uh, it, we'd like to consider, when we move it to finance, that it would probably come out of surplus. And... Uh, that's up to finance, but in essence, uh, it's a one-time, one-and-done type of a concept. Senator Rock. Um, why is it such a difference in price? I mean, there is one more drop worthy, you know, some there, gold the, or more. It's their price, pricing structure. So name, I think you're paying, paying, quite honestly, you're paying for a name. Um, they both re, um, are rated mil-spec worthy. Um, we've had them in the field for several months, both radios. Uh, gotten positive feedback on both radios. Um, at the end of the day, we have to look at what's it going to cost. And I 
cannot justify spending that extra money just have the Motorola name on a radio. Supervisor Gerard, the um, when uh, going going a little further into our problems with our towers, and then the presentation we had by some engineering firm that came in that, that said what we would possibly need to do to to get our coverage up to where it's acceptable, and the millions of dollars that it would run into, there was there was two things that the, the cheaper price was analog, and the more expensive was digital. And the digital also uh, came into play with uh, our local emergency medical and fire and police. Uh, because <coughs> they did digital, they would have to get digital radios uh, naturally to interact with that system. Um, so, so we were basing mostly on analog at the time. And, and uh, so my question, I guess, is are these digital radios? And if we do choose to opt into digital, um, is that is that are these is this a good investment or not? We we expect and I, and I think I wrote it down. We fully expect these radios will give us at least 10 years of service. Um, at this point in time, yes, we've received over a million dollars in grant money from two different awards. One from New York State Dormitory Authority, the other more recently from the statewide interoperability. Um, we do not foresee Warren County becoming digital radio because it was going to require, if I, my memory serves me correct, I believe 22 additional transmit receive sites. Those receive sites average uh, about $250,000 a piece. Um, that was in addition to what we already have out there. We just don't see where it is um, something that's uh, financially feasible for the county. I don't see where we're going to be able to come up with enough grant money to obviously cover that type of investment and uh, the, the long-term cost of having that many additional sites um, is just something that's not going to go away. Um, we, it's, it's, you'll see it's on topics for discussion, but we have something else we want to discuss is how we want to proceed with the continuing radio system upgrades. Can I just do it, Brian, would you agree with that? With the presentation we heard about changing to digital, if that's where we, yeah, where we wanted to go? I think what what we're doing and what needs to be done, and this is also a requirement of the grant, if you're using grant money to buy radios, you have to buy radios that are digital capable. They're called P25. And that's exactly what okay. these guys are doing. Uh, we do not buy radios that are analog only anymore. And uh, I think that's very important. And it gives us the option later on if we do want to, or if we want to do part of it digital. But I think the radios that Sean has described her. Okay, that's a top show. That's, that's I understand that. Any more questions? Yes. I guess I'd like to know what our other, um, in this department and, and throughout the county, our other one and done projects in this price range that we're looking at trying to accomplish. Well, fr from from the point of view of criminal justice, which th th this meeting is, uh, I, I, you know, that's that's the one item that I I'm calling a one and done. Uh, what are some of the others? I don't know. Here's the administrator. Maybe you have a thought. There's some paving projects that were going to be one and done. Um, do you recollect, Frank? Because we went through a list last fall of some ones and done. I know. I know paving of the parking lots and some of that stuff that didn't get accomplished. That was going to be a one and done project. Yeah. I don't think. Sean, just to uh, so I can put the motion on the floor. What, what, what was the total dollar? Two seven. Two seventy four eight thirty three. For the lower part. Did you get right. that wrong? Would somebody move that? Actually, we're going to move. We make them make the motion, but it's going to go go to uh, finance. Brock and uh, McDonald, second. And just more discussion. Yep. There was there was one other thing. Back, back, not not so much this, but the issues that we're having. We're, we're having officers get out of their cars in certain areas 
that could not communicate with the, the, the command center. And it was said uh, that repeaters might be needed in the cars and on the cars, that would help. And, and uh, excuse me for talking to Brian about it, but then that's where the meeting I remember, et cetera. Has, has that been approached or have it's we done that? Is it's that been done. Okay. Yeah. Um, we had asked the, the county for money, I think it was two years ago. And out of that money, it was to pay for two radio towers, the one that we co-located equipment in Luzerne and the other up on Maggie's Road in Warrensburg. Part and parcel of that project was also to put uh, repeaters in our law enforcement vehicles. That was done. The motion has been made and seconded to um, refer to finance $274,883.31 for um, portable radios. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. The uh, item D is a request a resolution for a new contract with Great Escape Six Flags for limited po po uh, police presence during hours of operation. This is where they reimburse us for the officers that go over there. Supervisor Gerard, motion, second by Supervisor Bramer. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Under uh, topics for discussion, I know I had spoken with the county administrator and the budget officer. Uh, the Sheriff's Office is going to be requesting an RFP to select a clerk of the works to oversee our continuing radio system upgrade project. Um, as I said, we've received grant money. That grant money hopefully will pay for four additional towers. But with every tower, um, there's different issues arise, whether you're dealing with the APA, different townships, negotiating leases to co-locate on a privately owned tower, negotiating to be on private property. Um, getting MOUs in place between towns and the county. Um, all of this takes an incredibly long amount of time. And what we've done with the first two tower projects, it was managed by the Sheriff's Office, uh, DPW, and the County Attorney's Office. Um, but as we move forward, because um, we had discussed um, putting up additional tower sites, that it um, becomes somewhat overwhelming when you're looking at doing that many sites. We also feel it would be more expedient instead of putting up two towers, waiting to get those two towers done, and all right, now let's move forward and put up two more towers. Let's move forward and get the towers up that we want to have done right away. Um, it improves public safety. It's better for fire, it's better for EMS, and it's better for police to enhance those capabilities. But this, this is, you know, this is good for forward planning, and um, you might just fill in the board there. there we, we do have an issue with uh, the one that we're putting in Thurman in terms of um, property evaluation. Right. So we looked at um, possible locations in the town of Thurman, uh, or I should say more appropriately, a tower that would serve that Thurman geographical area. Uh, we located a privately owned tower. Uh, they want $4,000 a month to be on that tower. There's no way we're going to pay $4,000 a month to be on somebody's tower. And to put that in perspective, we got in on the ground floor with Verizon, who's erecting a new tower over on 149. And because we worked closely with the attorney that represented Verizon and with the town of Queensbury, we were able to negotiate a price where we could be on their tower for $500 a year. Significant difference between $500 a year and $4,000 a month. I think what is more reasonable, um, based on what the feedback I've gotten from the state police because they also co-locate equipment on their towers in areas where they can't put a tower up because of whatever the regulations are, is that perhaps we will probably be able to negotiate something like $20,000 for a five-year lease to be on their tower. And I know we had discussed that, Ron, and we sp also spoke with the county administrator about that. Um, but these are things, not only the negotiations, but all the other paperwork that goes on behind the scenes. It's all stuff that takes up time and we'd like to have a, a professional company, whether it's Televate or some other vendor that can come in and help us oversee this. And what, what other tower are we hoping to do again? To Stony, to Creek. Stony, Creek. Stony Creek. Stony Creek, okay. which we're in the process of getting the paperwork done for that. Thurman, 149, Black Mountain, and put a new one in down at the uh, hospital, Glens Falls Hospital. Okay, so the, the yes. Okay, just jump on 
are you, are you going to be able to uh, work this into the uh, grant budgets, or is this going to be in addition to the grants? Because you have grant administration, and then what you're talking about it has more to do with the actual physical construction process. That's, are these things you're going to be able to work into your uh, grants, or uh, that we would front end and then we'd be reversed on, or is this going to be in addition to Well, right now, the way the grants were structured, it was to pay for the equipment, the installation of the equipment. It was, it was nothing budgeted, I should say, that was for overseeing the work, to be a clerk of the works. Uh, in, in speaking with uh, Mark Neal, who is our uh, radio expert, and talking about what other counties have done to get their systems up and moving forward, uh, they thought this was really the most expedient way to get it done quickly. We have a sense, a sense of magnitude, how much we think we're talking about here. You know, I had reached out to our vendor, and our vendor did not give us a price because there's so many variables. But I think if we at least got a clerk of the works, they would be able to go out and come up with some hard numbers for us. I don't want to throw a number out there and have it not be an accurate number. I, it would be a disservice to the committee, a disservice to the county. And that's why we want to have an expert come in and look at this. And because we have already implemented some of the upgrades that we were advised to do by Televate, let them look at everything we've done and maybe there's something else out there that we could do differently. Okay, <coughs> and this is the format that we're following is from Televate the engineers that have mapped out a the strategy to, to, get, right. to get to where we need to be. Correct. That that, that they, I'm backing up because I this was a while ago and I didn't realize you guys were implementing. Um, we started uh, once the county gave us money, it was $590,000 was the original amount of money we were awarded. We started moving forward implementing the changes they, they recommended. There's these devices, computers called Synchrocast. It deals with the timing of the towers. That was one of the things they told us to change. So we did. We made that investment. We, we, were, we changed that. They said, you need to get a tower over in Luzerne. You need to get a tower in Warrensburg to fill in these dead areas, if you will. So we've, we've implemented that. They also recommended some er other areas where we could put them. The problem with a company looking at that, well, well you'd like to have a, a tower over here. So take Black Mountain. There is zero infrastructure for Black Mountain. There's no power. There's no road. There's nothing up there. So w if we, we, I've been told that we're allowed to co-locate equipment up there because the state police own the site, but when we go up to Black Mountain, it's going to be an expensive site because everything has to be brought by helicopter. We have to bring our own power source, whether it's solar, windmill, whatever they deem is best up there. That's what they're using now. But we'll have to bring an additional power source just to take care of our equipment. So in essence, this discussion that we're having right now is, is to... I, I guess uh, confirm that you, you're going to go to an RFP for a clerk of the works to handle the uh, the towers. Correct. We're going to put together some uh, specifications for the purchasing department and have them put that out and see what comes back. Okay. So it isn't, it isn't in the form of a motion. It's more informational Correct. for the, the board and uh, we will be getting uh, we will be getting a request when you get when you figure out what the RFP is going to be and what the cost will be. Right. Okay. When, when we get get a, uh, the results back from an RFP, we'll certainly come back to the committee, report back what those results are, and seek your guidance and which way you want to go. Sure. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it's still a, a, a project cost, and I think that you know my recommendation would be that when it goes to uh, finance that if we had even an idea what this might cost, that that's really part of the project cost and it would be part of what I think what we would be looking to allocate <coughs> out of the fund balance as opposed to, because I don't think this is going to be coming out of somebody's operating position. Uh, that's my sense of the order of magnitude is that you know, you know, it's a big many tens, not many, but tens of thousands of dollars. So, if we could even get a range, then when it goes to finance, the finance would know uh, it's not really 270, maybe it's three and a quarter. Remember what you don't spend. It doesn't just, it would just fall to the fund balance anyway, back to the fund balance. So. I mean, we have the report. We know what the report says. We need somebody to follow up on the nuts and bolts of getting these towers put up. The process of putting up the ones, the last ones took over a year because there's so much involved in it. Having somebody come in 
to be your primary contact to oversee the projects is going to be very helpful. May move it along because we're piecemealing this. And this yeah. We're doing it the best way we could was piecemeal. The county gave 560. Uh, we got some more interoperability, interoperability money this past year. Senator Little's office uh, has kicked in 500,000 for some more towers. So all that's being melded together. It's just the time frame that takes. I think having a, a clerk that works to coordinate that will move this along a lot quicker. Yeah, it's, I think it's great everything we're doing. It's just that we had presentations from those, those engineers, like you said, we have that. But just to make sure we're in compliance and doing the right stuff and spending our money wisely and efficiently to, to get to where we need to go. I remember they said you need to do this amount of money right now to get you to where. Yeah, and, and for all we know, they may come back and put a quote in on being the RFP to see the project continue to move. We don't know until we put it out there. But it would be a, another update from them would help probably refresh with the new members, etc. Yeah, because we have two in. And okay. <coughs> yes. Are we done with this conversation? I just want, I want to bring up something else of this conversation. Is we got to get B. We didn't do B. Yet. We didn't. Do okay. Go ahead and do uh, handle B. It's still a referral pending. Uh, item B, since March we've hired one correction officer due to, re due to resignation. Uh, I currently have four vacancies for correction officer, two vacancies for the position of correction sergeant. That's an update. That's not a request. Right. Rachel? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm uh, concerned that under referral on pending items, last month we spent a significant amount of time checking about the SPCA moving under the sheriff's contract. At that point, I did notify the committee I am looking at all the contracts that fall under the court or the clerk of the board and starting to see if there's different departments ha that have a broader oversight and perhaps those um, contracts would be better under those departments. This has nothing to do with money or, um, you know, I'm not asking, you know, for any money other than the oversight. I, can, can you explain to me why it's off the list of pending items? I thought we were going to discuss it this I morning. Thought I, thought we were going to discuss. Morning. I thought we were at the last meeting we yeah. had decided that it would be voted on at this. So who keeps track? This keeps happening on a bunch of committees. Who keeps track for the pending items? We do the pending items list, but it probably was missed because that wasn't done at committee. That was another meeting outside of committee. Oh, no, I think we, it was. Yeah, it was the SBA. Yeah, it was the SBCA. So can, since we did talk about it, could we address it. I would just like to make a resolution that the budgeting and management of the SPC contract fall under the sheriff's budget um, versus under the uh, clerk of the boards. All right. Is there a second to that? Second Ms. McDonald. All right. Open for discussion. We really beat this to, to heck uh, sometime. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> why don't we call, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Okay. Is that all we need for that? It doesn't, because this doesn't attach, it doesn't have to go to finance or anything like that, right? I don't even think it really needs a resolution. I think it's just a budgeting. Oh, yeah. But we'll, just we'll thank you. Figure it out with the county attorney. Oh, sure. sure. We're right. dotting all of the I's. Thank you. It may just be <coughs> one. Copy we'll that report to tell them okay. Sean, is there mean. anything else? Yeah. I've lost track of I got one thing. Yes. No, that's fine. Uh, I was no, uh, it you that mentioned that, Ron, but talked about coming over to the visit to Jail again. Is that something you wanted to do? Yeah. We certainly can do that anytime you want to do it. Just get a hold of me and be more than happy to. All right. For the um, members of the board I, and, and, you know, the full su supervisory board, but specifically our committee, um, uh, I'd like to arrange a, a, a visit to the, uh, to the prison if there's... Um, Corrections. Corrections. <coughs> can we uh, can we kind of set a date for that uh, and work with the sheriff on that? Can you guys pick a date that's convenient for everybody and we'll make it happen. Okay. <coughs> Do we get uniforms? Yeah, I, I get a strike one <laughs> for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a, a full county board meeting on the uh, 19th that Friday, and it didn't appear that. Uh, that Wednesday or Thursday that <coughs> there was anything even in finance. So <coughs> one of those days work for folks, the 18th or the 19th of May? 
maybe before the board meeting? Hmm? Well, oh, that's about right. <coughs> Are you? <coughs> Aye. It's at 10 o'clock. <coughs> You're staying after, too, for that video. I don't know. Sheriff, it's about an hour, an hour and ten. I like getting things done in one swoop. I can't do it. I'm not. Why don't you just do some emails amongst yourself? Okay. Pick a date. You're the chairman. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to, I mean, uh, I'll pick a date and then you guys can tell me you can't make it. How about Thursday at 9 o'clock? I can't make it. Um, <laughs> but I've done the tour before. We did it a few years yeah. ago. It was excellent. I think it's worth doing an update. Um, but I agree with Matt McDonald. I think if we can What's do it all in one day, it's a little more effective. Doing your sock tour, Rachel, I can help you. The day of the board meeting? You just don't let the sock go. Oh, my God, I don't get it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a look at my calendar. Around. The day of the board meeting? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, the morning. Want to do morning the board meeting? Board board board. you got to stay after <coughs> and do a, a survey. Right. Uh, okay. 8.30? 8.30 at the board meeting? You'll never you'll never get through the tour in an hour. Not if you. Huh? You know, it takes more than an hour to go through I think you get through it in an hour if you want. Okay. You walk back, we Kevin doesn't want it. <coughs> We're going to do 8.30 of the day of the board meeting on the 19th. Have fun. Thank May the 19th? 19th of uh, May, right. Have fun. <laughs> I've been there. I know. Why are you complaining? You're not even going to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just don't think it out. We'll, <coughs> we'll, offer, we'll offer it to the uh, full board for... Um, we, had a, we had a killer day. Thank you. Okay. Anything else come before the, the yeah, committee? Hmm? Yeah, okay, Brian. All right. Brian, your turn. Thanks, John. There's been the jail before. Do you have an agenda? I think I got an agenda. Yeah. I really want the tour, though. Anybody that can't make it, we can take you through by yourself. <laughs> Make it. You want to go? Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. It might be more interesting than one of Yeah. Give your yeah, you go the hard way. Anyone in it? Two or three? Yeah. 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 All right, Brian, the floor is yours. First item on our agenda is a request to uh, set up a contract with Capital Digitronics. Capital Digitronics is the county vendor for radio maintenance and um, for items that we need to have installed in our vehicles, we find that that contract does not cover installation. So uh, the county attorney suggested that we do a separate contract with OES with Capital Digitronics <coughs> Uh, for the same numbers, for the same dollar amount per hour, so that we can utilize their services as well without uh, having to get into the sheriff's contract. All right. I have a motion for the... Um Supervisor McDonald, second. I'll second, but I have a Second. <laughs> Supervisor uh, Sieber, all right, open for discussion. Will you be emailing out the okay, <coughs> to be provided? Will that be emailed out to us? I'm sorry, Richard, please. The contract, it says to be provided. Will that be emailed out to us? When it's completed by the county attorney. He won't do it until we get approval here, and then okay. he does it. Um, I okay. personally don't have a problem with giving it to you. I don't know if that's something he normally does, but... Uh, um, I just would like to know what I'm voting on. No, nope. So nope. if I could just see it before it gets... Oh, that would be great. Yeah, it, it's tough because we can't do the contract till we vote on it. And we can't. I understand where you're coming from. All right. <coughs> it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
All right. <coughs> All right, our next uh, scenario is a discussion on EMS. As you know, this board tasked OES <coughs> trying to come up with a way to try to solve some of the EMS problems in Warren County. We discussed having a contractor come in and do a survey, and we discussed having that being done by our own in-house experts. And I'm very uh, pleased to say that the survey that our people, our EMS coordinators, were able to produce, um, I think it, gives, it was done in an excellent way. It certainly uh, didn't cost us anything compared to the ones that other counties have done. So I'm not sure how deep we're going to get into this today. There's no way you're going to be able to digest this information um, today, obviously. What we would like you to do is to take a look at the survey. There are recommendations that are listed towards the end. We have also developed a budget for what it would cost for startup costs and what that might be as a continuing cost and how that would be funded uh, from the areas that need the assistance. I think it's important to note this is absolutely not a scenario where we're trying to take anybody over. It does not insinuate that anybody's doing a bad job. It does not force anyone to be involved, i.e. we've heard questions about the City of Glens Falls and Queensbury not wanting to be involved in this because they don't need to be. And that is in there. That's, 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 this is a opt-in type of scenario. Agencies or towns that need the help can get the help. If they don't need the help, that's fine too. So that's what this is all about. Um, I don't know how deep you want to get into it. We have our email <coughs> coordinators here can explain anything. Um, the initial thought, I'll just give you the quick overview, is to uh, put together a scenario where the county would operate two paramedic vehicles, two fly cars, and those cars would be available 24-7. Any squad that does not have the proper staffing, can't get the staffing, or is out on multiple calls, then these vehicles could step in and assist to get the care to the people in a relatively smart time. Brian, the, um, the, 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 we've had a group of meetings on this. Um, it, interestingly enough, in, in that brochure that you have, it'll show you that <coughs> excluding Queensbury and Glens Falls, the, um, the startup cost of the, of the two fly cars and, and Etc. It was it's substantial, right? It was 150,000, I think. 172,000 <coughs> for all the equipment necessary, and this would pretty much to cover the North Country. Again, as Brian says, we're not not forcing anybody into this, but where there's a need, that it, it appears. And then there's a payroll part of that too, and that was almost a million dollars. So that's for full staffing. That's that's for. 10 operators, in other words, to operate two vehicles 24-7, uh, 365, right. that's the kind of dollar amount you so might be looking at annually. So as you, as you look at that, you know, and you'd say, okay, so, you know, now we've got <coughs> over a million dollars, and, and how does that get paid? And uh, it gets divvied up and shows it in there uh, to the, the towns that are going to be involved in it. Um, it's, it's a substantial number, but... As the chairman of our, of our committee points out, or chairman of our board points out, you know, what are we providing? It we're pri providing good service. That's that's the name of it. And, and without it, um, there's a question mark. That's correct. In the back pocket is the budget numbers. Yeah. The one that we have here is the cover sheet that includes all the towns in the county. The yeah. other sheet includes all the towns except one calls, and then the other sheet includes all the towns except one calls. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Sure. We, we tried to give you a lot of options. As I said, <coughs> there is a ton of information there. Um, we don't expect everybody to be able to digest that all today. However, what we do want to do is get this information out there so that you have an opportunity to look at it. The whole idea of this project is not to take any particular township or, or uh, anybody to force them to spend X number of dollars. However, 
if that particular township has the need, then they will have to pay their fair share. The same thing would happen if, let's say, uh, the squads in Queensbury get overwhelmed or the city of Glens Falls runs out of ambulances. Um, the same thing would hold true. This group could come into the city of Glens Falls and they would uh, be able to do that job, collect the dollars just for the ALS part of that particular job, and walk away. The, the city would not have to invest any money in it. It's just they would not get the revenue for that one time and that one vehicle. There, there are a, a, a number of, I mean, uh, through, through the meetings that we've had, there are a number of issues that really the town supervisors need to take this report and digest it. And, and what I'd like to do is schedule another meeting of this committee um, probably in a week, 10 days, so that you, you know, all supervisors, all town supervisors can take a look at this and, and try and get a handle on it. Um, we also need to make sure the city can be there. Yeah, and, and we, we would invite the city, absolutely. Well, because the mayor reached out to us, wants to know what's going on with the <coughs> EMS, it's important that the city fire chief and they be represented when we vet this program after they've had a chance to read it over. It's a lot to digest. We can't do it now. We're getting stacked up. Out. You know, there's no question there's areas in the northern part of the county that are in greater need. Uh, the bottom line is nobody, no agency in the county is immune from having a problem at certain times of day or depending on how much is going on. So uh, it's important that we build this to help out those that need it the most as expeditiously and as efficiency, efficiently as we can, but also still have the ability to cover for other areas should they be caught in a position where they're overwhelmed. But there, there's a whole number of issues that we really need to sit down in another meeting and, and talk about the revenue side, the expense side. Uh, you've got a pretty much a, an idea of what the expense side is and, um, and the need is there. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to set a meeting for the Wednesday the 17th where we would once again convene uh, this committee and um, again we we will invite the city and Queensbury if necessary if they 10 o'clock unless we have a will we have a conflict yeah uh, we, we have a severe conflict as well okay uh, well why don't we wait wait to uh, you know okay. I, it's just a couple things Ron if I could sure I want to thank thank our EMS coordinators for <coughs> getting all this information. There was a $80,000 report just came out from Essex County, didn't say anything. I think this report addresses a lot of the nuts and bolts and everybody needs to take time to uh, to review this. If we have to wait a couple weeks, uh, we'll wait a couple weeks. I know we're going into Memorial Day, but I, I think that they've done an excellent job uh, on their own time getting all the information. Uh, they've got most cooperation for most of the squads a lot of reading here plus the fact you know we haven't really met it with the city what this says and, and they could be an integral part of, of this whole system because they do have the manpower so we need some time to digest this maybe maybe a week's not enough Ron maybe we okay. ought to wait a couple weeks okay but, and and start at 10 o'clock in the morning yes Thank I think you. what's the most important thing to remember out of all of this when you're reading this um, don't get buried up in the recommendations. This survey was done at your request and it was done very well and it shows you where the gaps are and what the problems are. That doesn't mean that a recommendation that we have put in there is the answer. It could be one of the answers. So I think it's important that as you read this and you're looking at it say, well you know this recommendation I think would help out but this one here really doesn't work well for us. So this is where I need everybody to dig into it and uh, if you guys want to have another meeting, I think that's good. Oh, absolutely. We need a separate meeting. Claudia? Thanks. Just quick. I wanted to say thank you, too. The report is great, and I love it that we didn't have to hire a contractor to do it, a consultant, and we were able to leverage your own skills and connections. The other thing is, with respect to the shared services meeting this morning, maybe this is an area where we can say, hey, look, we're doing a consolidated plan. These things are still out there for us. Yeah, the we did bring that up that we wanted to uh, go to the state and see if we could get funding to maybe get startup funding for this whole shared services. Well, and have it count. That, right. whatever, whatever. that grant opened this morning. I have all the information. So Is it open? It's open this morning. So. We did meet with the Department of State and their people 
and they did list specifically send out the information. EMS, uh, countywide EMS startups as something that they have funded and will fund. Okay. And will count towards the seed requirement that we... Yes, we all need to learn how to play nice. Yeah. Travis actually attended the ethics meeting when they met with the governor's office about this. Okay, so we're we're on we're on on the way, and there there may be some funding available too. Brian, there's just one more thing that uh, uh, it isn't on the agenda, but I I just wanted you. To <coughs> can you just give us <coughs> an update on uh, the uh, fire training center? Uh, what we're trying to do with the town of Queensbury, and uh, where we're going with the um, the units that are left out at the Sibagagi property. Those units were donated to us. We had we didn't have a plan of a place to put them other than when they were offered to us we felt it was worthwhile and we did take them. We have worked all along since day one we started this training center back in 2009. I said to this board and the citizens in Warren County that I was going to try really hard to build the training center without taking dollars out of the general fund. We had our project fund that had been created by my predecessor and the other coordinators in, in uh, Washington, and we were going to try to do it that way. So we've tried all along to do this as cheaply as possible. We got to a point where we needed to clear land and we needed to have earth moving done. All these things we tried to do with the BOCES people, we got delayed by a year by them through some of their paperwork. Anyhow, the bottom line is it's taken us a while to get to where we are. Um, I did reach out to the town of Queensbury because we do need water there, a, a hydrant on site. Uh, I met with there with Mr. Strau and their representatives from the water department and with your help Ron back and forth I think we've come up with some good ideas on how we can share and uh, perhaps get some equipment from the town. Uh, so we want to move ahead with that. Kevin Hajos, engineer for Warren County, is in the process of writing the specs so that we can hire a company to come in dig the water line, bring in any other lines, electric, gas, whatever we want to do, do it all at once and get that all done. When that's done, we're leveling off the area where those buildings are going to go right now. Uh, Mr. Hajos also is going to have the tailings from the paving job they're doing on Ridge Road. The stuff that they do not need, the millings, is going to be delivered there. It's a lot shorter run than for the county to take it somewhere else. And that will make our parking lot. So. We're trying really hard to do this as um, inexpensively as we can, and uh, that's where we're at. If I can get these things to happen uh, spring, early summer, our goal would then be to move those buildings from where they are in the Sibagagi site, get them on to where they belong. The gentleman that donated them to us has offered to assist us in assembling them, and we would have a crane come in, set them, and we can actually move forward with it. Thank you, Brian. The, um the town of Queensbury uh, has a workshop coming up, and uh, John Strauss said he would make the presentation. We talked to the uh, water superintendent at Queensbury, and they have a thousand feet of pipe. They're not sure exactly where the pipe came from, but it may be a, a situation where we may be able to get the pipe at a very reasonable cost. We're going to get the hydrant, and also uh, there's a need. Uh, once we do that digging, there's also a need. At, uh, Kevin Hajos points out that. We need a new culvert uh, on uh, uh, Queensbury Avenue. That culvert was identified with our original architect and contractor that we had. We did pay them to go through the scenario of getting the DEC, Army Corps of Engineers, and all that. We have a permit in hand to put that in. So yes, we would like to accomplish so that at the same time. Even though there may be, you know, th th there may be some uh, digging that has to be done and some dewatering, but uh, we do have the DEC permit, so we're ready to move along. Um, we just need to have um, the Queensbury Town Board um, give us the go-ahead as to what their, you know, what the disposition of the uh, pipe will be, and um, off and on. Thank you. Thank you. There's one more thing, Mr. Yeah, I'm criminal. I I got a phone request from uh, Washington County. Uh, they're very concerned about raise the age uh, and what's it going to do to the foster care uh, costs. So I think. Eventually, we're going to have to look at that uh, state initiative of Rage the Age and see what what it's going to affect on us. I'll call Brian back and tell him we're not prepared to answer that now. But sure. I can broach that a little bit. I think it's going to be expensive. Um, I, the, the, the New York State Sheriff's, all the New York State Sheriff's were opposed to the 
the bill as, as it was written. Um, we were we were going to get in line with it because they had the wording in there that would protect the counties as far as um, if these juveniles have to be transported to a detention facility somewhere else in the state that has them, that they were going to pay for the, pay the county for the reimbursement for us to take them. They changed the wording at the, at the end. The, the 13th hour, they agreed with all the sheriffs. They said, "Yeah, we will cover, we will cover your cost to transport." Okay, they agreed to that. It's in the wording of this new bill, but they threw in other wording that's going to negate any of us to take anybody anywhere because they are putting it on the county to build their own facility to keep them in county. So it's really, really poorly written for the counties. It's another mandate that they're doing. They won't have to pay us, but they're going to make you build your own facilities from here. So probation is going to have a lot more work and, and um, the county is going to have more expense as far as detention facilities. That's what it appears anyway. That's what our lawyer tells us they think is going to be a problem. Um, but will they allow us um, to share a detention home with another county? I, you know, I think they will. I think they would. Um, I think that's all part of it. But the bottom line is it's, it's going to be pushed down to the counties and not at the state level. All right. Is there any more business to come before the uh, committee? Privilege of the floor? No, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Sieber? Yeah. Gerard? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to check their schedule.